So you're thinking about moving to Hoboken, New Jersey. Well, you're in luck because that's where we are today, as you can see. Right across from me is downtown Manhattan and midtown Manhattan. But you're not quite sure if you're ready to make the move yet. You want to learn some more about the town, about the city. Well, you're in luck because this video is all about Hoboken, New Jersey. We're going to dive into shops, restaurants, real estate, everything you need to know to make the move to Hoboken. Let's get into the video. Hey, if this is your first visit to the channel and you're trying to decide between the suburbs and the subways of New York City, then subscribe below and tap the notification bell so you can be the first to hear about the current market here in New Jersey and New York. Hey, I'm Jeff Massey, your local realtor. And the team and I, we get calls, texts, emails, video chats every day from people just like you who are thinking about moving to one of New York City's amazing communities. And we love it. So whether you're moving in seven days or seven months, give us a call, shoot us a text, or schedule that Skype call so we can help you make an easy, stress-free move to the New York City area. Whether it be from Manhattan, just over the river, or from as far as abroad. So as you know, we're standing here in Hoboken, New Jersey today, and we're actually standing on Pier C. This is a really cool little island, connects on with uh, two bridges, and there's a really nice, fun playground, amazing views of Manhattan, just across the Hudson. And the other thing that's interesting is we're following Sinatra Drive here, right behind me. It's not too sunny. You've got amazing restaurants on there. You've got the House of Q, the Ainsworth, the Union Hall, Del Frisco's, Halifax, and the W Hotel. That's the W right behind me. And a little later, we'll be talking about one of Hoboken's very famous residents. We'll be sure to stick around till the end of that so he can tell you more about that. And just amazing amenities here right on the pier. Like I said, you have Pier C, you have Pier A down there and then there's more piers that goes all the way up to 14th street now in terms of geography you obviously have jersey city to the west and the south you've got weehawken up there to the north and you've got the hudson river and manhattan to the east in terms of other geography you've got like this cliff that runs up against between jersey city and hoboken making hoboken's kind of little postage stamp of a city to the south you have the train uh, lackawanna train terminal down there where all the trains come in and in the middle here right behind me is this is Stevens Institute of Technology that's actually a college that is the highest point in Hoboken with that nice outcropping there you've got Castle Point on the top and above that again to the north you've got Weehawken Cove so that kind of gives you an idea of where we are in terms of geography now we're going to go down to Lackawanna Station. I want to show you all that beautiful interior down there that they've got in the station. You've got the ferries down there and then you have the pass station. So one of the cons with Hoboken is you really only have that one path station down in the southeast corner, but you do have ferries down in the south and the north on 14th Street. A lot of people, if they live in the sort of the north and especially the northwest, they're going to take a bus into the city because you've got Midtown Direct buses in. But if you're in, within this distance and you want to walk down the path, that's going to get you one stop to Christopher Street in like five minutes. And then, of course, if you want to go all the way to 34th Street, that's going to be like 20 minutes, 25 minutes. All depends on which stop you're getting off at. But lots of cool things to do down here. Let's keep going. We're going to show you a little bit of Washington Street, talk about shopping. And then at the end, we'll talk about real estate prices and what the kind of averages are. So let's keep going. So one other con that I forgot to mention about Hoboken is you do have flooding in this area. So this is the Hudson River and depending on where you are, actually where we are right now and Sinatra Drive and Washington is kind of the, Washington is actually kind of the top of the ridge. If you're, if you're right on Washington, you're probably safe. But in the lower parts, there is significant flowing, you, flooding that can occur. You see here, it's actually super low tide right now. But in the cases of like Superstorm Sandy and stuff like that, there was significant sea level surge that kind of actually coincidentally enough or funny enough, it kind of snaked in the back of Hoboken and then came kind of rose from the west. So definitely depending on where you're looking, you want to look out at the, the sort of the flood map and see how that might affect you. But something you'd you know, be aware of, you might need flood insurance for that, but also, you know, it can be mitigated with that insurance. You just want to make sure you're aware of that. I just jumped over to Pier A because I wanted to show you what an amazing spot this is in terms of having in your backyard of Hoboken. The pathway walks all the way along the edge of the pier and then in the middle you have this beautiful 
green space that's sort of cut in a diagonal going down to the gazebo. And then in between you have this amazing elm tree grove and they're on this perfect axis. I'll show you some footage of that. But behind me is Lackawanna Center or Lackawanna Railroad Terminal. This is where if you're coming from other lines to the north, they're gonna end up in Hoboken. You're gonna have to change it to caucus in order to get over to Penn Station. I was talking about that in another video. I'll link it below. And you're gonna wanna watch that to understand about the Midtown Direct suburb train lines, specifically the Morristown line. You're gonna wanna check that out in a separate video. But also here you have the ferries that come out of the Lackawanna, like I was saying earlier. And you also have the path station downstairs. So you have a lot of transit options there. And then behind me and up the way is Washington Street. We're gonna head over there and check out some of the shops and restaurants. comparing more of the subways versus the suburbs, I'll link down below all my videos on the subway towns that I've talked about, including Jersey City, Hamilton Park neighborhood in Jersey City. We just did Borum Hill, that should be up soon. And you've got Cobble Hill in Brooklyn, Brooklyn Heights in Brooklyn, as well as a couple other spots that we hope to add in the future. So check that out down below in the description. So some interesting stats on Hoboken, the city is home to between 58 and 59,000, depending on which census you're looking at. A little off now because of 2020. And actually it's just under, it's like 1.97 square miles of land, but actually, and that's in total, that's not land, that includes some water. So when you take out the water, you're looking at one and a quarter square miles of land. So that works out to a density of about 48,000 per square mile. So it's a very small town city i guess you could say but i like to call it a town because it is so small even though it's definitely an urban density but you do get that density pretty high because of the water so interesting stuff i'm up over on washington street it's a little quieter over here so i wanted to talk to the camera without as much not as many people watching but you have tons of restaurants here i mean i can't say enough about how many different styles come out you know from bars restaurants burger places pizza places I'm just gonna rattle off a few here because I found this really good article on eater.com. This might be helpful for you. And a lot of these have really good reviews on Google. So, and it's, what's nice about this list is it goes from all different types of cuisine. So you've got right at the top of, I should say the south of Washington Street, you've got Curry Up Now. That's a nice Indian restaurant. You've also got next door, there's Satay, Malaysian cuisine. Across the street, you've got La Isla downtown, that's a nice Cuban place. Actually headed up to Alibaba right now. It's a more of a Middle Eastern cuisine. And over also downtown, I forgot to mention Empanadas Cafe. I just walked by the old German bakery, that's really nice. And in terms of pizza, you've got Benny Tudino's. That's a really famous spot. But you've also got places like Grimaldi's. Not the Grimaldi's of Brooklyn Heights, of course, a different one. But now, funny enough, I'm almost at 8th Street and over there you've got a really great italian restaurant called odo strada hence the name around the corner from there you've got a really great italian gelato place called kiku Lu, which is just opened maybe a few months ago really cool stuff there really high quality gelato you know what they say if you go to a gelato place and there's like a million flavors they probably don't make it on site this one they probably have like five to ten so it's really nice stuff there in terms of other italian places at the top north section there's plenty of italian cuisine around but you've also got one of the very well rated m p bianco mano they've got a lot of handmade cheeses there on site and i'm actually walking up to another one this right here is called vito's and son so lots of italian food here in hoboken as you can guess so you definitely won't go hungry here in hoboken if you have a big appetite
also on Washington Street, you've got great stores like this one right behind me. This is the BB Gourmet. But you've also got bigger places like the Aspen Marketplace that has more of an organic section. Oh, check this out, pastrami duck. <laughs> Lots of different fairs, like I said, not just Italian. In terms of big shopping, you've got the shop right up in the Northwest. You've also got an Acme over there. And then in the Northeast by the water, you've got a small King's grocery store there. In terms of like wine, you've got Cool Vines, another place that we saw in Jersey City. Of course, the famous Carlos Bakery. Of course, know them from uh, the Food Network. Also, you've got Trader Joe's up on the north end of town. There's also organic, basic foods. And then you've got cool places like Toon's Record Shop. Lots of cool things going on. Of course, there's plenty of fashion options. You've got Nike, Madewell, Anthropology, tons of places, as well as small boutiques like Alba. Lots of different stores on Washington Street. So definitely the place to check out if you're thinking about visiting Hoboken to see if it's right for you. But here it is behind me. This is Washington Street. So this is the north end going up towards 14th Street. And then that way to the south, you go all the way down the numbers. A cool thing that Hoboken is known for, you'll see art everywhere. These are the street light controls boxes that you'll see on every corner. Even those are decorated with art. And you've also got really cool mural works throughout the town. And I'll show you some of that footage as we're walking around. don't forget to stick around to the end of the video. I've got a really fun sort of pop culture reference here in Hoboken. So stay tuned for that. In terms of schools, I'm walking up towards St. Stephen's School. So it made me think of it. Uh, now that's a college, but in terms of elementary school and high schools, you've got three elementary schools here in Hoboken, one middle school and one high school. And of course, as always, if you're looking to get more information on schools, check out niche.com and greatschools.org so you can get more of the stats on that. But check out this corner here beautiful beautiful historic homes look at the sort of brown stones behind me and then even like these very decorative sort of polychromatic brick homes limestone facades beautiful stuff and then this one you have like a roman brick white brick with this bow window just beautiful context and across the street here if i jump over behind me you'll see these gorgeous brown stones uh, we're up now in that higher part that I was talking to you about where you're probably safe from the flooding. So this part is probably never seen the flood because it is sort of on a ridge. But as you go down to the west, past Washington Street and further on, and then definitely further back towards the west as you get up towards the heights where those cliffs start, that part you're, you're going to have to be worried about and definitely check out with your insurance company. But just beautiful context. I'll show some other homes that I did some detail shots on. Those are really pretty and just beautiful day here. Just so you know, this is the first day of spring. We're in 2023, first day of spring. The buds are starting to pop. You can see on one of these, looks like a sort of a cherry blossom tree behind me, gorgeous. And then these are really cute homes where you've got the staircase going up into the hillside. Definitely something different and not not typical of Hoboken, just typical of this street because of the hill. As I was saying, down further, you've got more townhouse style, which those are either going to be broken into apartments or full townhouses. So while we're walking down this beautiful quaint street, let's talk about real estate in the last 12 months. So depending on what website you're looking at, the median average sales price or value, again, depending on which website you're looking at, for Hoboken is about 725 to 830. Now that's across all property types. So it's sort of misleading because some of these bigger homes I'm walking by, this can be in the millions of dollar range. Actually one on the market right now is about $5 million, which we'll talk about in a second. But again, that's across all property types that you've got big and small in there. So for example, right now on the market studios, as low as 300,000, one bedrooms, 400 to 700,000, two bedrooms, as low as 500,000 up to 1.9 million. So those are getting into the fancier condos. Three beds you're looking at as low as 650 all the way up to 2.5 million. Again, we're talking big spectrums here in terms of quality. And then four bedroom plus, those are getting into your townhouses and your super large condos. You're looking at 1.7 all the way to 5.6 million, like I was saying. Like those big, like look at this one, just gorgeous corner lot that white almost looks like a terracotta brick with the red roof very pretty 
And then like these buildings here, you've got smaller apartment buildings. These might be rentals, I'm not sure. But in general, you have that throughout the city. In particular, you've got beautiful streets like Garden Street, Park Avenue, where you have smaller homes. Here's another example of a beautiful brownstone behind me. Again, we're up on that ridge towards near Stevens Institute of Technology. Look at this one, very wide, very grand brownstone. So let's keep going. So as promised, we have our special bonus content, which is right at the end here. And it's actually to do with Hoboken's most famous resident. It's actually Frank Sinatra, who was born here in 1915. And I'm gonna show you a little clip of the new building that stands on the house that he was born in. That's at 415 Monroe Street, just on the west side of Hoboken. And I'm standing in front of Blue Eyes Cafe in honor of his name. And right over here is a bronze statue of Frank himself. Like I said, I was born in 1915. And if you're interested in learning more about other towns with interesting pop culture connections, check out my Borum Hill video. We've got some interesting content there referring to uh, cool song lyrics and so on. So I'll link that in the description for you to check out. So Hoboken was known for Frank Sinatra and actually the park behind me is all named for Frank Sinatra himself. And there's a nice soccer field up there behind me that has association with this park. So it's just a beautiful place to reminisce about Frank. And of course, you could also check out the really cool construction over there. Those are now condos. I believe they're all sold out, but 415 Monroe, really cool building. So, so I thought we'd finish off the video over here in Stevens Institute on the campus because the view from up here is amazing. You can see Midtown, Hudson Yards behind me all the way across down to lower manhattan and the world trade center of course not a view that most hoboken residents take in that often because it's mostly for students up here but i wanted to finish it off because there is that great view look if you're interested in finding out more about hoboken possibly making hoboken your home and you'd like to get out on a private tour don't forget to reach out and schedule a call with us we'd like to learn more about your real estate needs and as always if you find this content helpful please don't forget to share like and comment below if you see anything interesting that you wanna point out to other people. Thank you so much for letting me into your home and I hope that together we can help find your next one. In the meantime, we'll see you in the next video.